Right. Look alive, y'all. Look alive. Look alive. Come on, Gabby, get Kate. in. Are we sitting forward or backwards? We're sitting kind of forward. You guys, we are not good. You should angle it more this way, so I'm in it too. Gabby, get in. You're get in. in. Get in. Well, we get in. Are you blinding me? The light is blinding us. That's why I'm on We is dark and dreary outside. Uh-oh. Dogs are <laughs> All right. Hey guys, welcome to this video. Tonight's video, extra video, is all the questions that you guys think we've been avoiding. So we printed off all your questions. We put them in this bowl and we're just gonna pick them and we're just gonna answer them and, and tell you guys what you think we've been avoiding. And unfortunately, our house is chaotic. We set our life up as chaotic because I love chaos. I love having animals just running around all the time, driving us crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was not about me. Down. You can't pick. Alright, so. Why can't Sophie ride Storm? Why can't Sophie ride Storm? Well, why can't you ride Storm? He's too lazy. So, the truth is that Storm doesn't want Sophie to ride him. We spent so much time trying to figure out what Storm wanted in life and what he wanted to do, and he loves his beginner kids his walk trot kids he's taught a couple of kids to canter the very beginning of canter but for the most part he's used for walk trot kids and we respect storm and we love storm and we want him to be happy so that's why sophie doesn't ride storm in the grand scheme of things it is such a great idea it would work out perfectly if that's what would make storm happy but unfortunately storm doesn't want to jump courses he doesn't get the striding he doesn't want to do the things that sophie's doing right now and I'm really proud of the fact that we have found what he does like to do and we've let him teach little tiny kids how to walk and how to walk trot. Um, will Gabby get another horse? I fixed your grammar. Oh, thank you. That sucks. <laughs> will Gabby get another horse? I have no clue. We don't know for sure. I think, I see it. I see it in her future. We're committed to Chino. We love Chino. We think Chino can do it. We know Chino can do it. It's just getting everything exactly right for him. And I believe in us and I believe we will. Gabby's heart is in Chino. And so that's where our heart is. And that's where our focus is. Um, one day, Gabby's only 15. One day she will get another horse. Good dog. She's a dog. No, she's a baby. She's my baby. Do you think Sophie is ready to train a baby? Do you think Sophie is ready to train a baby, a foal? Absolutely not. Not without the amazing miniature horse trainer that we have um, helping Sophie. Hey, it's my turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> you be cheating over here. Do you regret not buying Grayfin? Do you regret not buying Grayfin, so Gabby? Did you miss riding him? I don't really miss it, but I enjoyed riding them. What were other names that you guys considered for honey? Do you remember all the Hot names? Hot Tart. Hot <laughs> Dog. I did not <laughs> consider those. I did. I considered Pop Tart. Uh, what were other ones? Um, Pop Goldie we considered. No. Well, we said them. I didn't consider that. Alright, what did you consider? Lulu, Isabel. Lulu, Isabel, yeah. I can't remember, but yeah, I don't we can't to... remember. But we took like days of trying to figure things out. Like, what was the one that I wanted to name her first? Um, what was that one that you wanted to Goldie. name her? No. no, I wanted goldfish. <laughs> Who will everyone be showing next well, year? Well, I don't have a horse, so. Willow, I'll do and, and hand yeah. shows with Willow. Someone else asked, will you be showing three foot this year, or do you think you're gonna still stick at two foot nine? nine we haven't talked about it with her trainer yet we have no idea but that's probably what she's going to show um sophie doesn't have a horse yet and you guys know that sophie is going to try a few western lessons and, um to see what she actually really wants to do and if there is something else that she really wants to do she's still going to continue to do hunter jumper and um with our trainer but she really really wants to explore and see what else is out there so she'll be doing that this spring are you going to try different disciplines no you're happy with your hunter? Mm 
Oh, so finally, we know. my turn. It's winter. We're not at that spot yet where we can figure it all out. We're we're gonna we'll find that out. We'll figure it out when we see what this winter how, how things go this winter. How is Daisy's training going? I think she's doing great. I mean, she still sleeps on the couch, even though we tried to not let her. But we didn't actually try not to let her. It was our idea that she wouldn't sleep on the couch, but it's important to her and it's not a big deal for us. So she sleeps on the couch. Um, other than that, she's doing really, really well. She still has her own little quirkiness with her personality. Like, um, because she's deaf, some things startle her where our other dogs can can figure it out faster like the other yeah, day me. like i the, walk up behind her she doesn't even know i'm there yeah and then she'll be like ah <laughs> whereas our other dogs will hear us coming so there's like a slight little part of her that is a bit different than other dogs because she's deaf and i think that that's just natural and normal in all intents and purposes she is so much like a regular dog she does everything that we tell her to. We do sign language with her and she's doing super well. Um, tell them about what happened the other night when she was sleeping with you. When you pulled the covers or pushed her or something? Oh, I, I pushed her out of my way so I could um, pull the blankets up and she screamed and she ran away. <laughs> So Sophie rolled over and tried to pull the covers up and she wasn't expecting it because she was asleep So it startled her and she just screamed <laughs> and went running away and that's just the just How it is with a deaf dog like there are just some things that she's always gonna struggle with because she can't hear And she takes up the whole bed. She takes up the whole bed um, so why don't you listen to advice that you're given? So that is a big one on our channel. A lot of people get really offended if they feel we haven't listened to their advice. And I think that um, what they don't know is that we always read and listen to what people suggest to us. You guys know that we only share a little bit of our lives with you. So sometimes when we're given advice, it's based on just a little bit that we have shown. So like things like why can't Storm be Sophie's horse? It's a really difficult situation because you guys don't know the full story. You don't know that Storm only gives lessons to walk trot kids because that's what he likes. Or you don't know every single thing about, about the situation because you only know the parts that we've shared. So it's really difficult when you guys give us amazing advice if it doesn't fit for us because of the parts that you guys don't know, then it, I feel like it must... I feel like it's confusing to you guys because you can't understand why we are not doing what you think we should do. In all theory, Sophie having Storm for her horse is perfect. In theory, that's the best thing. But because she needs a horse that can get the striding and go to shows and wants to, to do that kind of stuff, he's just not going to ever be a good fit for her. One day in the future when he comes home, um, he might very well turn into her trail horse. We don't know what will happen completely, but it's situations like that where people tell us stuff or, or, or tell us things that we should do based on theory of how it would probably be the best, but they don't know all the details. They don't know all the little things that make it so that that won't work for us. And we still appreciate all the advice so much. And we always like talk about it. Like we talked that through so much. Wouldn't it be great if Storm could be Sophie's horse? But when the people give us advice that actually will fit into our life, we take it all the time. Like you guys have changed our lives with your suggestions, changed our lives. There have been so many times when we've asked things or tried to figure out something that the answers that we've gotten locally from people that we know just haven't fit with us but you guys have come through and shown us a different way being able to access people from all across the world has given us so much diversity in the way that we do things and i love that you guys we are so appreciative so just know that if we don't take your advice it's not that we haven't considered it it's not that we haven't discussed it it's not that we don't think it's a good idea in theory because most of the time you guys give us really good advice, but when we don't address it or we don't uh, appear to take it, it's usually because there are other extenuating circumstances that you guys don't know that are preventing us from doing that. Why are you guys so against lunge line lessons for Sophie? Lunge line lessons for Sophie. Oh, that is my dream. Um, our experience so far has been that the girls started on lunge line lessons when they were very small. Once they learned to walk, trot, canter, they were off lunge lines and they have never gone back. I 
know from friends that they have done it completely different at their barns and um i love that idea of lunge line lessons for sophie and in fact i think gabby could benefit from lunge lines lessons and i think that i could learn for benefit from lunge line lessons like i think lunge line lessons should be the staple in every training barn that lunge line lessons should always be the go-to when you're struggling with anything absolutely think lunge line lessons are the most amazing gift to a rider. <laughs> Did you not realize that I was pulling your hair the whole time? Yeah, I didn't know why you were hair? pulling. She's pulling my hair the whole time. And it was like that. Yeah, that's not how you do this, Sophia. You, you do this. That's what you do. Okay. Okay. Next question. Where is Toby? Holy heck, I cannot even tell you guys how many times I've been asked that question. Where the heck is Toby? So if you guys don't know who Toby is, Toby is one of our chihuahuas. We have three chihuahuas and Toby was the smallest and the youngest of them. And when we moved to our farm, I was able to see that Toby was really struggling with the fact that we weren't, um, that we weren't in the house as much as we used to be. He wasn't a farm dog. I ended up not having as much time to spend with him and he really seemed to need that. So I found him a home that is a one person, he is a one person dog of somebody who is older and stays home all the time and never leaves him and he's doing super well and he is super happy. Nothing bad has happened to Toby. It was just time to find him something that was meant just for him and I think that he appreciates it and loves his new life. Um, are you seriously shopping for so Sophie's new horse? So we were seriously shopping for Sophie's new horse uh, for a long time. And then we decided, like I told you in a previous video, that he wants to try some other disciplines. And so we called a halt to looking for Sophie's horse because what if she tries some discipline in Western riding that she loves and wants to do that instead. Like she's at a crossroads in her training where she's not sure what she wants to do. She loves jumpers. Yeah. What do you want to do, Sophie? Tell the um, people, what do you want to do? I want to try dressage and uh, barrel racing. Yeah, she really wants to do dressage and she really wants to try barrel racing. And I'm sure that the barn that we're going to, that she's going to take a few lessons at in the spring, will have other things that she'll see and want to do so badly. And I just think we're at this stage, she's only 13, we're at this stage right now where she's going to get to choose what she really wants to do. I just think waiting till the spring when she knows what she wants to do to get the right horse is so much more advantageous than just buying a horse now just to have a horse. Even though she really misses having a horse. Baby, you're heavy. She puts all her weight on you. Do you have or have had any pets you regret? Do you have any, dude, have we ever got any pets that you regret? Um, Do you have any? Um, no. No. Okay, so I loved my bird. We got a bird. It was the cutest little thing ever. I regret getting him only because I didn't take an account I didn't take into account the fact that my family might not like the bird the way that I do. So I loved him. I loved him so much, but my family did not. And in the end, I regret that I didn't take their feelings more into account before I got him. What happened to Fiona? What happened to Fiona? Fiona had a baby and it changed the whole dynamic of everything. She's doing well. She's amazing. She's, we still love her. I still talk to her sometimes. What has been your biggest challenge last year? Last year, I would say our biggest challenge was finding Sophia Horse. Like I said, we were seriously looking for a really long time. Like, at the, like for months, we were seriously looking and it's so draining to be looking for a horse. And also, I think it was really hard for us to figure out what we were going to do with Chino. If we were going to... Um, continue to try and help him improve and figure out what he needed that we weren't giving him. Uh, I feel like we're in a really happy place right now with him and I'm happy with all the choices that we've made but I think those are the two things that have been really challenging last year. Do you have a, what was what's been challenging for you? Um, I miss having a horse. Yeah Sophie really misses having a horse. What was challenging for you last year? Not getting to show as much as I wanted. Yeah that was true too. What happened to the bearded dragon? So what happened to your bearded I'll dragon? I'll go get her. No, just tell them. She's right over there in her um, 
page. <coughs> In her, yeah. So I don't know what you mean. I don't know what the question meant specifically. If you're talking about like, is her health bad or what has happened to her? She's just been a happy, healthy little dragon, living a dragon's life. She's she's here with us. Oh, it's my turn. Do you think you can bring Penny to the barn for a lesson? Yeah. Like the only problem with that is that. Um, I do want to bring her there and ride her there, but I don't want to have an English lesson on Penny. I want to have Penny as a trail horse. I definitely think that there are things that I could learn to do better, but my heart and Penny's heart are on the trail. So if I was going to get a lesson for Penny and I, I think I would go to a lesson barn that did trail riding lessons. And I would get a trail, like I would get a lesson on the trail. Your voice turned into I know, I like suddenly have like, <laughs> like an allergy or something. Have you thought about moving barns or trainers? Well, um, we have changed a barn several times uh, throughout our journey. And we've had a couple, we've had a few different trainers, like three trainers, four trainers. I don't know what will happen specifically in the future. Gabby is enjoying riding with Brandon so much. She loves being a hunter. Sophie does take, plan to take some lessons at a Western Barn, a few lessons at a Western Barn, to get an idea of what she wants to do uh, with her future. But we um, also we plan to move houses eventually, and all of those things. Uh, like so, that will definitely come into play. What we end up doing, I'm not sure what our plans are specifically. Other than Sophie taking some lessons at a Western Barn this spring, we don't have any specific plans currently to change barns or trainers. Why a full instead of a more experienced mini? So that's a good question for me because we're the ones that bought the full. Sophie, were you expecting a full? No, but I wanted one. Did you want one? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know. So I told you guys before that Sophie had spent time working with an adult mini, mini that needed training and fell in love with him. And so we wanted to buy him. That's what we ended up. That's why we started thinking about buying her another miniature horse is because we wanted to buy him. Unfortunately, it didn't work out with us buying him. So we started to search for other miniature horses. And through the course of us trying to figure out which horse we were going to buy, we met Honey. And once we met Honey, we knew that she was the one. Like we just knew she would fit into our whole environment and to our situation. Her personality was incredible. Once we knew that she was the one that we wanted to buy, I talked with a trainer that agreed to work with Sophie and helping her work with the mini. So we felt confident that she could handle it with all the help that she's getting and she's been doing great. So that's how we ended up with a mini, with a foal. We never specifically started out looking for a foal, but through our search, we ended up finding Honey. And once I met her, I just knew that she was the right one. Are you still looking for a new farm? Um, yes, we are still looking for a new farm. I want to be so... I want to be so super specific on what we get and we are looking we look every single day if you look on my phone you'll see the search engine it's all it is is our our farms for sale and we want to be in a very specific area which is one of the things that's really limiting us like if we could just go wherever we wanted we would we have found farms that we would move to but because we want to be in a specific area, it's narrowed our choices a lot. But I feel like it's coming to an end. I know I said that last year, but I'm crossing my fingers. I feel like we're on the verge. I've been dreaming about it. I just feel like we are on the verge of finding our dream farm. And of course, once we move, that will change everything. Well, anyway, that is it for tonight's extra video. I hope we answered all of your questions that you thought that we were avoiding. Sometimes what I think you think we're avoiding questions, we're not actually avoiding them. It's just that... Because we only share such a small part of our lives and you guys don't know everything, it's hard to like catch you guys all up. Does that make sense? Like it's easier just to keep moving forward than to go back and try and explain things without explaining an entire history or an entire story. Our videos are so short each day, like 15 to 20 minutes. And it just does not give us the time that we would need to explain every single thing. And... Um, I think it does create a sense of misunderstanding. Anyway, I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it all made sense and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Don't you know that you're beautiful? Just the way